five slides, not too long. So it was the topic of MOCA. We didn't get a chance to cover MOCA, but it's more about unit testing in general, which ties in the jest. Unit testing and integration testing, you know, usually the smallest parts of an application are called units. Therefore, you might want to isolate a unit test, often called unit testing. So you might want to, you know, test little pieces of your components in the unit test. Integration testing, you often hear the difference is when you're testing between two units. So you have two pieces of functionality that need to be tested together. You know, if you have a calculation engine and then you have you have something that renders it or does something with it, you can test the calculation engine and then you can also test that your function works and then you test them together. That would be an integration test. So manual tests, Usually smoke test, dev test, or your QA tests. You also have UI tests, which you can do through the user interface, so automation tools, integration tests, testing across integration of one or more systems or components, and then you have your, your unit tests, which is very isolated units of coding. We use Node quite a bit. We didn't get a chance to, to use Mocha, but it um, basically we can create our our functionality in our modules, then we can test and test those modules uh, in isolation using Mocha. So if we had a calculator module that has two methods, add and subtract, to prove that it works and it doesn't break throughout our work, we could write a unit test for it and always run it. Seems like a little bit of overhead. Uh, sometimes I gotta tell you, I don't like writing unit tests, but when I get into it, I can really see the value of it. And it has saved me quite a bit. Um, as you're working through it and you're thinking in that way of trying to break it or trying to think of the negated, you try to do the happy path. And then when you do the, um, you try to do the opposite of that, you can find bugs along the way, uh, but you gotta have time to do it, right? So main features of Mocha, of Mocha is asynchronous, synchronous testing very easily. Uh, Highly flexible, choose and join the pieces you want. Spy library, assertion library. You have your choice there. I use assert in my example here. Support ports both TDD test driven uh, testing and BDD behavioral driven development. Sorry. Um, some things describe it. So you have some keywords like describe it, describe sets a new suite before, after, before each, and after each. So even in my just example, you might want to set up some variables or some constants or some state before every single test runs. You might need to have that there. Um, before each test runs or just before everything, you might need to set some, some uh, values that you use or maybe you need to mock some things. Um, that's what that would be for. So there's assertions with should.js, Mocha uses this. So should.js allows you to, actually it's the same slide, um, allows you to do assertions with, uh, here's a better slide, uh, pretty expressive, this library, main goal is to be expressive and, and helpful. Chainable BDB styles, so expressive language. So when you are trying to write a test and say, I'm, I have a new suite for greeter, I'm trying to describe what I want to do when synchronously used, and then I'm going to start building my test cases, right? When I do it synchronously, the first case would be, it should return hello, right? So we, we can trigger the function greeter, and then we can, we can test that the result of it should be the string hello. So that would be a test. Very simple test, but we are testing that return type of that function. We can also do the negative way and say, okay, well, it, it should not, should not equal this or should not equal a number or whatnot. Um, it should be a string. It should equal a hello. It should have a length of five. Nice little tiny test around it. So using Mocha, we didn't look at this in Node.js, but if we had uh, switching gears a little bit from React to Node, if we had a module in our main app.js, it has a calculator add two numbers. Uh, and that should fail because we're going to do adding two strings. And, and if we add two numbers, it should equal four. So this would be just calling it from my integrated terminal. If I run this guy, app.js, 
what would happen there. So we see we have an error right away because why? Because if we look at that, <clears throat> what happens here? Uh, what happened here? Error, there's an error happening at that one. So maybe there was a problem with, with this situation here that we had. If we turn this to an integer and run this and run this guy again. Uh, let's take a look at that guy. Then that works, nine and four. So internally in that module, we don't know what it is doing, but it, it should expect that there's that there is integers coming in. If we take a look at what's inside there, we have, whoa, good. We had a we had a some type of test. We had if the variables x and y are not integers, then therefore throw an error. Otherwise, add them. Same check for the subtraction. Throw an error, otherwise subtract them. And then there's some of our logic for the is integer. And then we have the module exports. That's all well and good. Um, however, let we may want to we may want to write some unit tests for this, this calculator. So what you do is create a, create a test. And uh, first of all, I installed in my package.js uh, mocha and should. And then in my test, I had required these modules. So I required in my module for calculator. And then I used this, this should library. And I set, up, uh, I set up a couple test cases here. So the test suite is called calculator. And then I'm going to just focus on the adding. So a couple test cases. It should add correctly. So I'm calling my module. I'm calling the function. 2 plus 2 should equal 4. It should not equal. So 7. So I'm doing the opposite way. 4 and 7 should not equal 4. OK? And then it should throw an error. So we're testing for that error. If I go to add two, two strings, it should throw an error. So it should capture the throw. Now, this is kind of interesting here. When you wanted to actually uh, get this to work, you had to kind of wrap it in the function. That was kind of interesting. But anyhow, and then after I get that test suite, I want to focus on the subtraction. Same thing. 10 subtract 5 should equal 5. Two numbers, whatever they are, random should not equal 5. So we're testing the opposite path and then trying to trigger the, the error as well. So that would be our test. And if we were to run it, I'm sorry, I have to use my full path, but you'd have Mocha and then the test file. And then if you run that guy, just let me, let me expand that a little bit here. You can see it'll go through the test suite here. The calculator is, is the suite. When adding two numbers and you'll see the checks there that everything is passing as we expect it to. And then we get the end result, six, six passing and what, so that's really good. So if some functionality changed for whatever reason, and uh, I don't know, maybe somebody did a minus one on top of the two numbers, and then we could check 10 minus five should equal six. We change that there and we run it, you'll see there right away that uh, one failed. What failed? This, this test failed. Should, should add subtract numbers correctly. Should be should subtract numbers correctly. And uh, that failed. I should correct that. And then why did it fail? Well, maybe because I had the wrong test case or maybe my logic changed. So it's a nice way if you did work to run your tests after to catch any bugs. So that's the Mocha, the Mocha test. I know I have like seven minutes, but uh, let's try to look at the React side too quickly. So as we talked about, Jest is a nice framework. Jest, uh, Jest.io, I'll even get the animation going here. Kind of cool little JavaScript animation testing framework. Uh, pretty nice in the same way. Uh, you can do it on uh, Node, React, Angular, Vue. It's um, pretty nice mocking. I got to say, it's pretty. It has the same type of assertions and those kind of deals. Nice documentation and API. So if I had a React component, this would be a quick example. I'm not going to go through all the code here. But uh, let's say we have a very big React component, not very big, but um, uh, there's a couple, I'm not going to go through all the details of it, but suppose inside of a React component, it goes through and it does a bunch of work, lots of work in there, right? And there's a lot of methods. First thing you know, well, we talked about JSX. Here would be an example of lots of JSX happening inside a return statement. And if you notice, all of my variables are set before it returns. And in fact, a lot of things are, are, are offset into functions. 
that do the work for you. And there's a lot of small functions happening. So we may need, we could test a small piece of a function. Here's a small function here. Is it a French segment? Has to return true or false. Or, you know, given given something, will it return a certain keyword or what have you, right? So I could write a test and run it against these, this component. And because they're functions, and this is a class component or functional component, I could still test those individual pieces. And I can also test the entire function itself. So there's a lot going on, but uh, I want to I want to import React. There's another tool. There's another thing called Enzyme, which allows you to, interestingly enough, render the uh, like trigger the render of the component without actually needing a UI. It's pretty nice. I um, import my React component and then I start mocking some things because it allows you to mock some things. This is a little bit of setup. So before each before each test runs. Do some setup. So I, I just modify some props. Data is coming in. I'm just setting up. Uh, and then I have some of these keywords here. Describe. So I'm describing the test suite, which is called uh, recent search. And then this would be my first test. Um, and what's really nice about it is instead of writing three separate tests, you can actually provide an array and give it the value and what you expect the return type to be. Um, so I'm targeting this French segment, which is a very small function here. Where was it? All it is is this. So what I want to test for is if it, if undefined comes in, undefined and undefined will be false because it will fail. If I pass in FR as for French, it should be true. If I pass in English EN, ENG or EN, it will be false. And that's, that is the result of my, my test. That's all I want to test. Um, and I want to, I don't want to do three separate tests. So I have an array and for each time it'll go through and it'll put in the segment and the expected value. And then you can see here, I use um, enzyme to do a shallow render of the component and then I create an instance of it. And then when I have this set up, now this is, this is how the testing module uh, does the bootstrapping. Then I can call, I can call that, that function right here. I can pass in undefined French or English, and then I can get the result. So whatever that string would be, I would say I expect the result to be what I expected. So if I pass in French, FR, I expect the result to be true. If I pass in ENG, I expect the result to be false, right? Um, and that would be one test. That would be a pretty good test. At the same time, if I am targeting something else, and let's see what that guy is. Build a list item. So this thing goes through. And based on the data that comes in, it tries to create a list of uh, a list of of um, list items. So it doesn't matter what it does, but it, it, we want it to test it from the outside. So if I pass in an empty array, uh, my test is should return no results when no data is provided. So I'm going to set it up in the same way. And then I'm going to call it, and it has no data. And I expect the list item length, which is, which is it should be zero, to equal the length of the search history, which is empty array. So I'm basically saying I expect zero to be zero. And that's how I'm actually picking apart those two things. And what I would do to run just, because there's so many just, just um, tests in this project, just actually has a uh, test config here. And in this test config, it does a lot of setup, right? But I'm, I added inside my test config that I want to match on that test exactly using a wildcard search. So when I run this now, obviously I'm not gonna check it into my branch, but this will only look for my test and only run my test. Otherwise, if I don't have this, it'll go kick off however many hundreds to 1000 tests we have for all our components. So I have that there and I can clear this guy. Let's take a look and I'll just run it. So I need to run npm run test. We'll kind of get a bigger look at this guy here. Kick it off and Jess is gonna try to look for that, try to find that test file. It finds it, it's gonna run those two tests, cross our fingers here that it's gonna, gonna pass still. 
Uh, I scaled it down. I had 27 tests. I'm just showing you two. So it says one test suite passed, four tests passed. So you can see, you can see the result here. It went through and it passed all of our tests. Uh, so they all worked. Now it has some warnings here because, um, so I actually test the UI with, with some other advanced tests, but it's basically our, uh, warning me that we have something called a snapshot testing going on that we're not using. And what a snapshot is quickly, I'll just, uh, I'll just tell you quickly is you can, you can also uh, for your component, uh, not only test the functionality, but also test what it renders. So what it will do is if you use, if you use, um, well, let's take a look at it here. So I have the full, do I have the full, where is this guy here? So I'm in my remote desktop here. So let me see if I can get that that list here quickly. I know I'm a bit over time. So let's restore my entire. Why don't I just go to my GitHub and just and just revert what I did? All right, let's discard my changes and and uh, show you the full test test results here. I have 27 tests using this uh, React test renderer and using Enzyme to shallow render. There's a couple tests at the bottom, way at the bottom here, that you can actually say it renders. So if I pass in no data, I pass in no data, uh, I create a snapshot of the component and I map it to J a JSON file. So it takes, it takes a snapshot of all that HTML, maps it to JSON, and then it compares when you render it with no data to the snapshot. Is it empty? If it's empty, it passes. So it does not render search component with empty props. And then I do the opposite. I give it data. It renders a recent search component with multiple items. And it expects my tree that it pulls from the JSON file to match the snapshot. And the snapshot, you'll see here, it, uh, you have your tests and then it'll create a snapshot file. And if you look at that file, this is what it generates for you. It generates a just snapshot of the rendered uh, HTML. So when I run this, it'll compare against it. So let's run that entire suite and let's see that we didn't break anything. And uh, for the video purpose, let's hope it, it uh, we didn't. We should see 27 tests run and we should see all green. Ideally, so it's going to go find that test. It's going to run it. It's going to run all those tests and also compare the snapshot. And it's there we go. So one one test suite passed, 29 tests passed, two snapshots passed, and the time. So everything is good. So snapshot testing is really good in case in case somebody goes in there and tweaks the JSX. Maybe they add a new element and they don't know that the snapshot has already been taken. So it's a good way of checking not only the functionality of your component but also testing how it renders as well without having to use the UI. So it's pretty nice. So that's, that is uh, just testing and Mocha testing as well. And uh, hopefully you're still here because um, I'm going to get here quiz soon. All right. So I will, uh, I'll just stop this right now. Stop this recording. Thank you for listening.